program defining win in Madison Square Garden for Red Raider basketball as they defeat the number one team in the country. You're watching Double T Insider. I'm Taylor Peters alongside Robert Giovanetti. That 70 to 57 win was the first time ever that Texas Tech has upset the top team in the country. What a monster statement for this team. Monster statement on the biggest stage in basketball, Madison Square Garden, the most iconic venue in all of college basketball for a team that had been struggling, a team that had their leading scorer sitting over there as a cheerleader. You can't put it into words how much that meant. But Davide Moretti would step up to the lead and he would lead this team to that victory with 18 points. But distribution was really the key as all but two players would score points in that game. The great thing about Davide during that game was he didn't get frustrated. He didn't have a shot early on. But when they needed him, he, he, well, he put some daggers into Louisville and really some big shots late that really helped turn the tide. And three players were in double figures too. One of them a career night for Avery Benson with 10 points. I mean, just an energy player. And he's kind of established that as his role the last couple of years. But for him to come out and contribute the way that he did last night was, was huge for him. Very early on, Avery came in and, and changed the tenor of the game. It was it, Louisville had kind of established early on dominance. And then Avery came in, hit the big three. And it just, tr it just changed everything. It turned the whole game. And Avery Benson is a, a player too who, you know, he's a walk-on, right? And so he just kind of has a chip on his shoulder and that's what coach Beard has loved about this team the last couple of years and I would say that Avery in a lot of ways embodies who coach Beard wants this program to be you know they said it on the broadcast he plays every game like it's the last game he's ever going to get to play you know he threw himself in the scores table at one point he thought he wasn't going to come back he comes back he's just a tough kid throws himself around provides the energy and but he's provide he's proving himself to be a bit of an offensive threat too. and those two blocks right there would light up the crowd they would light up the bench I mean just for somebody like that to come in and to be able to kind of change the tide I, I think it means a lot for for Avery and it means a lot for this team it certainly does another guy that I thought had a big game was Terrence Shannon and he got in foul trouble early but he had a couple big baskets we saw the game against DePaul also Terrence is a big time player and he he seems to thrive in these type of environments when TJ Holyfield too I mean he's a guy who we've seen a lot from but it's just the way that some of these players' roles are changing. And you have uh, Chris Clark, who has 12 assists. I mean, it's not necessarily a, a glamorous stat, but it's something that uh, says a lot about the way that Coach Beard and this motion offense are trying to accomplish things. You know, they, they really want Chris to be more involved in the offense and practice. They really preach it to him. And you can still see him on the floor sometimes. He's always looking to pass first. He'll pass up some opportunities. He also had a big three that in, in, in a pivotal time of the game. He, he's going to be such a key guy during conference play. Yeah, you talk about a dagger. That one there late in the game was, was huge for Texas Tech, but Coach Beard and this entire team, the identity of it is, is defense. And so for Texas Tech to be able to hold Louisville to scoring 34% from the field says a lot. You, you could see it last year against Michigan, Michigan State, some of these teams that really seemed taken back by the amount of defensive intensity that Texas Tech puts on you every single possession. And they don't Normally, a lot of really good defensive teams after you get about 20, 25 seconds, they'll let up a little bit. This team doesn't, and you can see that in Louisville's face. They got very frustrated late in the game. What can a win like this to snap a three-game losing streak on the maybe the biggest stage in basketball against, obviously, the top team in college basketball do for this Texas Tech team moving forward? Uh, for Coach Beard, he's been preaching it all year, and now these young guys will believe it. It's about the process. Don't worry about what happens. If you follow the process, good things will happen. And we saw that happen, right? They could have had their heads down after the three consecutive losses. But again, that, the number one team in the country never happened before in Texas Tech history in Madison Square Garden, national television, Jimmy V Classic. It's, it's a great story. An amazing story for head coach Chris Beard and Red Raider basketball. We're talking more Texas Tech basketball in another historic week for the Lady Raiders. We'll be right back on Double T Insider. He's a West Texas native who donned the scarlet and black on the football field in the late 1950s. The two-year letter winner earned a bachelor's degree in education before graduating from medical school. As an orthopedic surgeon, he served the Amarillo community for nearly three decades, never forgetting his ties to Texas Tech. He's been a member of the Board of Regents and the Chancellor's Council. But Dr. Bob Stafford's proudest achievement is family. These are the real people of Texas Tech. Thank you for being here. Big game for, or big win for our program. Uh, this was um, a turning point game for us. Not only um, do we beat the SEC, but we're still undefeated. One of the very few teams in the nation to still be undefeated. And as we rebuild this program, it's moments in games like this that, that become very powerful uh, in our movement 
and our movement to march, quite frankly. Welcome back into Double T Insider. It was a historic win for the Lady Raiders on Wednesday as they defeated Ole Miss 84 to 48. It's the largest margin of victory ever in a Big 12 SEC challenge, and that means a lot for this Lady Raider team who has come such a long way in the last year. And when you think about just the programs in both leagues, that it's it's hard to beat anybody by that amount. And we've seen the Lady Raiders really dominate early on the season, and you don't really know until you get to an opponent like a power five opponent like we saw with Ole Miss and so it gives you a lot to really build on and look forward to the rest of the year. And you hear Coach Marlene and all these players talk so much about their goal this year is to make it to the postseason to the postseason. And so whenever you face off against power five teams in the non-conference, it's important for RPI points at this point to, for them to be able to kind of propel themselves into the NCAA tournament. And, and in almost every sport, the Big 12 is so difficult and you know you're going to have some tough stretches in the Big 12. So you have to take care of business in non-conference and you do that. And and, it, and again, as you mentioned, it's a Power 5 team. It's going to help you in the RPI. But it's kind of important for this part of the season for the Lady Raiders to kind of be able to, to keep that momentum, but to sort of keep their heads down. And Jada Walton's actually a transfer from Texas A&M. And I had a conversation with her last week. She said, I just want these girls to know we can't be too high and we can't be too low. We kind of just have to get our job done and, and stay the course. I was interested to see how just when you knew at a certain point that, that they had that game in hand and Ole Miss was not going to make a comeback, just how they would handle it mm -hmm. uh, on the sidelines. Because as you mentioned, and they know there's so much left to be played and you can't run off the court after this one thinking, hey, we've arrived. And I, I, I see that with Coach Stallings. She knows we've got to keep these guys, knows the grindstone, so much more left ahead of them. And you look back to last year, a year ago, Coach Marlene is talking about the type of pieces that she needs and the type of team that you know she wants this this program to be and so to be able to see that kind of come into fruition is really rewarding for her. Credit to her and our fans who, who've stuck with it because she said last year, look, this is what we want to be. We maybe don't have the pieces yet, but we're going to get there. And she'll be the first to say she still doesn't have all the pieces, but as the recruiting cycles continue, you can see now the direction of this program. We're getting closer and closer. That huge victory for Lady Raiders on Wednesday over Ole Miss. Take a look. The Lady Raiders hosting the Ole Miss Rebels in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. The Rebels will have their hands full. There are five. Lady Raiders in double figure scoring. Here we go. Great start by Texas Tech. Little 5 0 run. Carr all the way. That's the way to end the first quarter of play. City with a long rebound. Now she'll take a three on the left side. You betcha. Sid Goodson dialing long distance. Runs into the table, no problem. Gets it back from Goodson. What a finish. Brewer up and in. That's a nice move. Nice strong shot. Pass deflected and another steal. And Luffy Johnson says, oh, you think you're confident with your offense? Let me show you mine. See it all the way, ladies and gentlemen. Boogie goes left to right, bounce pass Tucker from the free throw line. Kicks it off Naila for three on the left side. Got it. Terrific team win for Texas Tech in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. This was um, a turning point game for us. Not only um, do we beat the SEC, but we're still undefeated. We're one of the very few teams in the nation to still be undefeated. It's moments in games like this that, that become very powerful in, in our movement. Now this Lady Raider team remains one of just 15 teams in all of the NCAA that is still undefeated. You know, we've talked so much about just what Coach Marlene is expecting from her team, but what's important for her to see from this group throughout the rest of non-conference? I think just keep your foot on the, the accelerator the rest of this of December. You've got the Chris, you've got the break for uh, finals. You've got a little Christmas break. Uh, you've got that education game, education day game where the place is just nuts with all the students. So there's going to be some distractions uh, for this team. Get the, get the team focused in looking ahead to the Big 12 play starting just coming right up. And it's been really exciting to watch the way that these returners have really kind of come into their roles. And we've talked a lot about just the changes that Chris Carr has gone through and Brittany Brewer. Um, but but Sydney Goodson has also been really impressive for this group. Sydney is to me a, almost a little bit of the glue of this team. And she's the she's a bit of the cheerleader. She can score. She can she's a great passer too. Mm -hmm. She had a couple of really great passes against Ole Miss. And, and I love the way she plays and the way she leads on the floor. Exciting things coming for this Lady Raider team. Still to come next on Double T Insider, we're talking about a really impressive group of newcomers that's led by freshman Alexis Tucker. We'll be right back. Banks gets the rebound. Here come the Rebels trying to get on the board. 
steal by Tuck. Oh, what a great pass to Brewer. Can't finish, but who else? Tucker is there, reversing well. Between the lines, you betcha, there she goes again. She knows we're talking about her. Goodson inside to Tucker, that's effective. Very good offense, but played both sides of the floor. Welcome back into Double T Insider with just three returners from last year's team. Coach Marlene needed to see a lot from her group of newcomers, and I think that at this point it's safe to say that they've really started to kind of step up into their roles on this team. I think back to the first practice that I went to in the offseason to see all these new faces, and Alexis Tucker really stuck out to me just from the beginning, just her energy, her enthusiasm. We talk a lot about Brittany Brewer and Brittany being a walking double-double, mm -hmm. and, and Alexis gives you that also. And, and to me, that's a bit of a surprise and really a, a shot in the arm for this group. When mentioning Brittany Brewer, too, she's really the only uh, contributing post player that we have at this point right now. And so you need to have someone like Alexis Tucker who can kind of be like a, a guard forward, who can kind of be able to make some plays inside when, when Brittany needs a break or just whenever there's opportunities to be able to, to work the ball inside. And I think that she's really started to do that and kind of showcase her versatility on this team. And she's fun to watch off the ball when she doesn't have the ball. She's very active. She's energetic. She's very hard to defend. And in a man's situation, and it does take some of the pressure off of Brittany. She's smooth with the basketball, she's smart, she makes really great decisions, and she can score the ball from a lot of different places on the court. Alexis Tucker is having a sensational freshman season. The freshman sensation, Alexis Tucker. For just her poise and her maturity as a freshman player, you now she scores and makes basketball plays at both ends. Alexis with one dribble from 16, got it. Tucker with a big high how you doing ball game tonight. First off, I'm kind of honored to be playing for the Big 12. Just to be able to play that first game and just to step out on that stage and to hear the fans and to play with my team, I think that's really, that's really cool. I'm really excited for that. That's Tucker's game right there. Very impressed with the freshman. Carr runs it up into the front court, giving it to Tuck, running the floor on the baseline, little floater good. I think I can really step up to what Coach Marlene is asking me to do. Um, I don't want to be like kept in this little box. I think I can do a lot more for my team. Tuck, this freshman has been so impressive, Brian. Just being able to develop my game so I can be better than who I was, I think that's really important. Tuck thought about it for three dribble drive, takes it down all the way in the paint, lays it up and in. Alexis with a dozen here in this first half. I'm just looking to my coaches for that like leadership and that guide so I can just be able to produce for the team. Again, leads the Big 12 and is ninth in the NCAA and field goal shooting percentage at 66.7%. She's going to be one of those players that it's just very difficult to take off the floor. And another potential game changer that we'll see make her debut as a Lady Raider this weekend is UConn transfer Lexi Gordon. Talk about a score at the, in the inner squad scrimmage that was open to the public. I think a lot of our fans got to see it for themselves. She can score, she can shoot. She's a perfect complement to what, what Marlene's trying to do with this offense. And she fits in really nicely. She's a good team player. I don't think there'll be any chemistry issues at all putting her into the lineup. I mean, she's just a natural born leader too, but I think it'll be really exciting to watch her as she kind of knocks off the rest. She actually hasn't played in a game in a couple of years, but she's just, she's so good. But beyond that, as we mentioned, she's from UConn, so she knows what it looks like to make it to the postseason. She knows what it looks like to be in big moments. She's been around a big time program at UConn, she's helping this become a big time program. And you start thinking about the lineups that Texas Tech is going to start to put on the floor, really going to be very hard to defend for a lot of teams. She's going to really give this team a different look. And when you talk about building a program, it's important for Lexi's leadership to kind of help uh, build and mold some of these freshman players to teach them what it looks like to prepare for a, a season that will lead you into the NCAA tournament. And the great thing for Lexi is she doesn't have to do it by herself. It's not going to be on her shoulders. Team already has great leadership. We've talked a lot about Brittany and Sydney Goodson. Those, those two are also tremendous leaders. Yes, she has, Lexi has seen it from the UConn standpoint, but now it's all somewhat coming together for Coach Stallings. Exciting things coming for Lexi Gordon and this Lady Raider team. Still to come on Double T Insider, we take a look back at a group of seniors who will have a lasting impact on Red Raider football. 
Welcome back into Double T Insider. The first season under head coach Matt Wells is officially in the books, and this staff and the players are, they have their eyes set on the future, really. But when you look back at this group of seniors, I think that in the future we'll talk about how impressive they were and how important they were just for the movement and the development of this culture under Coach Matt Wells. You know, coach Wells talked about it from the first day he got here. He wanted to win immediately for these seniors. That wasn't just talk. Uh, I mean, these guys, when you th when you think back, that this isn't the staff they wanted to play for. They came to play for a different staff. And for them to buy in in their senior year, uh, no one was happy with the wins and losses at the end of the year. But these guys made their mark, and they can be proud of that. And this senior season was really important for someone like Jordan Brooks, who we know has a future in the NFL. Jordan improved his draft stock throughout the season. He was a guy that Coach Wells targeted early on. You know, we, we know Jordan, we, we've been around Jordan. He's kind of a quiet leader of this team. He's not really gonna be a, an outspoken guy, but he's a guy that the, that the other players look to to say, hey, is he buying in? Is he a part of this? And I remember one of the first spring practices, Coach Wells stopping him as he was walking off saying, hey, number one, great practice, great practice. Now bring some of the guys with you. And, and those are the things that, that build the foundation for this pro program going forward. And it's going to pay off for Jordan. He's going to hear his name called in April in the draft. Great season for Jordan and great things coming up for this Red Raider football team, thanks to a group of leaders in this senior class. I think this program is really changing. It's in the right direction. We have an upwards trajectory, and I think that we shouldn't lose faith after this season. I know the results aren't what we expected or what we wanted, but we're really setting the course and, and laying down the foundation for a sustainable success in the future with the Double T. I think it attributed all to the, the new coaching change and the leadership they're developing. When Wells came on board, I mean, of course, everybody was kind of iffy at first, not really sure what to go, just because, I mean, you know, we've been used to a coach so long. But, uh, I mean, as the spring went on, the fall camp went on, we kind of got used to him, and we and we all was like, all right, I mean, he's, he, he wants his program to get back on his winning feet. Coming in, I wasn't sure what, uh, what it would look like as far as me and, 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 uh, and defensive-wise, but, you know, individually, my success, you know, was due to a lot to Coach P, uh, his system, Coach Shows, Coach Wells. So I think, you know, all three of those guys, and plus everybody else, just really had a, a a big part in it. I think one of the greatest things our coaching staff does is it develops a whole roster. Instead of just a starting 22, they're developing you know ones, twos, threes, all the way down to their incoming freshmen that are redshirting. Uh, they're building a, fa a different foundation, a different program. So I think just the buy-in from from the players and the coaching staff, I think there will be success. I think that part of a winning program is is having that loyalty of fans behind them. Um, I, I mean, we, we heavily depend on our fans, you know, on every third down with defense out there to get loud and rowdy. And uh, it's an extra, like, component that that's essential to uh, a, a successful winning team. It plays a huge role for the players and the coaches and the, the guys that's out on the field. With another year under Coach Wells' belt and, uh, and the whole coaching staff as a whole, I think guys will get a lot more comfortable in this conference and uh, eventually wins will start showing up. I really see us being very competitive, and much more than we have been in the past under this new staff and this new regime. Uh, I think that once more people buy in, when they get the right guys that they want to recruit into the facility, I think that we're really going to sustain something and make a run for it. But as we mentioned, the coaches and the players, their eyes are set really on the future, and we'll talk a new group of signees coming up a week from today on the signing day show next Wednesday. Yeah, the cycle never stops, right? The group leaves, going to bring a new group in, and this is a very important class for Coach Wells and his staff. Their first really true class that they've been able to work, go out and work, look to see who they want, who they bring in. Big things coming for Red Raider football. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Double T Insider. Welcome back into Double T Insider. Coming up next week, it's signing day, and you can watch our annual signing day show right here on Fox Sports Southwest at 10 a.m. Meanwhile, Lady Raider basketball looks to host Houston Baptist on Sunday for a 12 o'clock tip, followed by Education Day on Tuesday as they host Prairie View at noon. Meanwhile, Chris Beard and his Red Raider basketball team return home Monday night to host Southern Miss. That'll be 6 o'clock at the United Supermarkets Arena. That's all of our time for now. Thanks so much for being with us today on Double T Insider. I'm Taylor Peters for Robert Giovanetti. We'll see you next week. And if you missed any part of today's show, head on over to TexasTech.com or download the Texas Tech TV app on Apple TV and Roku.